Quick recap. I got a 30 watt fiber coupled laser module in exchange for design and assembly of a few constant current drivers. I came up with a simple circuit consisting of an efficient DC to DC converter in series with precise linear regulation. But because a mistake could have some very costly consequences, I've asked you for some constructive criticism first. Turns out my simple circuit wasn't all that bad. But I got enough valuable input for a revision too anyway. Here's an overview. I removed the solder mask from the high current paths, so that the electroplating automatically reinforces the thin copper layers and I can put some solder on there additionally. I also added compensation capacitors to the MOSFET driving op amps. Without those an op amp would be much faster than a MOSFET and ringing would occur. In the last version I was planning to use these vertical heatsinks and in theory they are still good enough. But I wanted some more headroom so I made the mounting holes larger. What? That way I can mount the transistors on the bottom of the circuit board and use isolated screw bushings to press them against much larger heatsinks. This way both styles fit. Finally I'll remove the laser orb because that ESD protection device is supposed to be mounted as closely as possible to the laser. Instead I'm adding a transient voltage suppressor which costs a few cents but can absorb much more energy in case of a catastrophic failure. I've tested these drivers thoroughly and they do behave very well. But there's been one more interesting suggestion. What if I used the constant current op amp to take control over the DC to DC converter instead of a secondary linear regulation. The output of a switching regulator requires additional filtering but the energy efficiency would skyrocket. With low cost Chinese circuit boards it's not a problem to purchase some special prototyping laser drivers just to verify and play around with the idea. But it didn't take a lot of playing around, because a double op amp and a few passives was all I needed to make it work. But before actually trying anything I've got to clean up the termination on the optical fibers. The fact that some of these fibers look charred might be the reason why this thing is now on my table instead of doing its job in some fancy machine. I wouldn't be surprised if these bad terminations reflected some energy back into the emitter causing more damage if left unattended. So first I'm going to try and remove this aluminium piece and the old termination along with it using the cheapest fiber cleaver I could find. It has a hardened wheel to score the fibers and a spring loaded hammer mechanism that comes crashing down to smite the weakened fiber. It's not quite powerful enough though. I mean the tool feels nice but it's probably meant for thinner telecommunication fibers and not coated 0.2mm ones. I guess I have to use an old pair of side cutters to cut off the strand and that caveman method shouldn't be a problem because the fibers will need lapping anyway. Without a perfect surface light can't exit the fiber axially and the termination would just burn again. So I'm proceeding straight to a major mistake and that is using bubbly 5 minute epoxy to glue the fibers into a ferrule. This kind of crimpable wire terminal seems to be fine for the job. The problem is the epoxy really. And before noticing anything I'm going through the whole lapping ceremonies. I haven't caught anything on camera but I'm pretty sure that this is what happened. Even my tediously polished surface can't be perfect. So a little bit of stray energy starts warming up the bubbly epoxy. It gets softer and the air bubbles start expanding unnoticeably to the eye. But that's enough to make the surface finish a little bit worse and to cause more misdirected laser energy. The temperature starts rising faster and a typical thermal runaway situation occurs. Until ultimately, the whole dog's breakfast is regurgitated. That just ruined my work, but it also gives me the opportunity to show off some more fancy Chinese gear. I got a proper vacuum pump and a degassing chamber. No more air bubbles in my epoxy and I'm sure there are many other applications for it too. temporary balloon inflation and other things. For lapping round 2 I also got a much better microscope. It's an Endon Star ADSM302 provided by the manufacturer. It has a unique design, some awesome features and some silly features. 
but where it counts, it's perfect. It has a fantastic all-metal stand that doesn't wobble when making adjustments. And it has bendable LED illumination that allows you to get into all angles and read laser-etched IC numbers. The working distance is absolutely incredible. Usually it's awkward to work in the limited space underneath a microscope. But this thing could be mounted completely out of the way, somewhere over the bench. It can be mounted so far away that you might need a remote control to access the menu. Well, thankfully one is delivered along with a microscope. But for me there are no useful settings in the menu at all. I think it comes courtesy of some standard camera chipset, so I can't really say that the development time should have been used elsewhere. But what I am going to say is that I haven't touched my stereo microscope since I got this. Depth perception sure is pleasant and useful, but only so much. For what I do, a comfortable posture, variable magnification and an HDMI output is much more important. Oh, that was just pre-substance. Um, the HDMI port is my favorite feature hands down because it puts out spectacular Full HD 30fps footage that can be recorded with a capture card. So the next time you see something that looks as good as this in my videos, you know where it comes from. The non-removable camera icon in the top left corner is also a good indicator. For now, back to the fiber lapping, where the microscope will come in especially handy. A plain old piece of glass would be sufficient, but I've got this 40 kg granite surface plate, so why not? I'm going to use this lapping film set from Banggood. Goes all the way up to 12,000 grit. Also very useful to remove minor scratches from sunglasses, displays and even cars. It's water resistant, but I'm not sure if water actually helps in the lapping process. I use it mainly to make the film adhere to the surface plate. And now I'm just going through the grids incrementally. Usually I have little faith in steady hands, but this worked out surprisingly well. After a bit of practice I got a good feel for when a grid is exhausted and the surface is as good as it gets. Then I'm using the ADSM 302 to check for inconsistencies like these. If all is well and the microscope shows a uniform surface, I'm moving on to the next piece of film. I found it counterproductive to draw figure eights. Just circles worked fine for me. Mm, we are getting better. This is what happens when I relocate the flexible LED illumination to just the right angle. Kind of creepy. Can you imagine looking into this with an ordinary microscope? I would have a hard time trusting it, even if it was disconnected. And this is it, 12,000 grit. It's not picture perfect, but I hope it's good enough, because it's the best I have. Well then, let's laze another hole into the stone, this time hopefully without a burning termination. Oh, that's promising. The beam is not even focused and we are at half power, aka 20 ampere. Let me just professionally touch the termination real quick and judge if I'm close to burning it. Hmm. Slightly warm maybe. I think I'm going to try and find some even finer lapping film to turn it into a perfect mirror finish. Behind the scenes my linear two-stage constant current driver is working, in which I have a lot of confidence now. The DC to DC converter idea will have to be tested a bit more. I'll tidy up and link some schematics in the description, if you've got some more of that constructive criticism to spare. In the next episode I'll attach this thing to some CNC hardware, and I'm looking forward to it a lot. Thank you for watching, see you soon.